Happy birthday as well. You always find the latest courtyard. Even in solution. In out of the box. Hello and welcome to Radio Waves by Totterbert. If you enjoy reviews, comparisons, band scans of new and classic portable radios, then make sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon so you don't miss any of our most excellent videos. In front of us, we have the Tamahun FS086. It's an AM FM weather band emergency portable radio. You can pick this up from Amazon for around a $20 price range. Here it is Emergency Crank Radio. Very basic box, picture of it. Made in China. Little code there. Solar panel, crank radio, flashlight, phone charge. All right. Yep. I am a sucker for emergency radios. Pretty awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and open this up and see what we get in the box. All right. Radio here. Directions. Anything else? There's something in there. Okay, box should be empty. Yep. About the side here. First thing we get here is a cable. Yay! This is a USB micro variety to charge the battery of the radio. There you go. Awesome. Here is the radio in bubble wrap. Go ahead and take this out. And we got a little pamphlet here. Radio flashlight. No batteries. Hand oh hand crank. I forgot the D. <laughs> Han Han crank. <laughs> Or solar power. Okay. Now you gotta laugh a little bit and have some fun with it, right? Function. <laughs> um, here we got one watt bright white LED. And I'm gonna show you that flashlight part of it. Pretty awesome. Uh, in an emergency situation, light is probably one of the most important things when the power goes out. This thing has an amazing flashlight. Uh, I'll just tell you right away. I'll get FM AM NOAA. So it's just a pretty much a basic sheet just to kind of give you a general idea. Again, it's pretty easy to figure out. Um, here's a bunch of things, uh, features, which we'll go over. Um, pretty cool. It's got charging indicator, which I'll show you. Pretty neat. Oh yeah, here, I think it talks about how much time you get with the crank. Okay, so hand crank, um, for three to five minutes to activate the internal battery or when the unit has been idle for 60 days. Okay, good to know. Uh, here we go for subsequent charges. Turn the hand cr crank for one minute to produce 20 to 30 minutes of continuous light. Um, 130 RPM, your crank, that's going pretty quick. <laughs> that's two times a second. Uh, or you get five to 10 minutes of continuous radio usage on medium volume. And I'm guessing that's pretty true because it's a lithium ion battery inside there. And those seem to charge really nicely. The ones that have the nickel metal hydride packs tend not to charge as well for me on dynamos. So I'm not a dynamo fan, you guys know that, but that's there for you when you need it. A USB port charging, always do that. Um, it's provided cable, you can charge the internal battery, always keep it charged. That's the best thing for this radio, so you're ready to go in an emergency. You can charge your smartphone with the fully charged uh, internal battery, which is nice. Uh, that's one good thing about these type of radios with the high-capacity lithiums, is that they can charge smart devices uh, very good. Okay, so this just pretty much goes over stuff here. Charging protection. It tells you about the four blue lights, which I'll show you on the radio. We got specifications. Oh yeah, it also talks about when it hits a certain power, it'll just turn off automatically. So there's a smart circuit in there. So if you're charging your phone up and the battery dumps, it'll it'll dump and it'll stop before it goes too low, so it doesn't hurt the battery. It's good to know. Uh, mass, maximum power consumption 3.5 watts, probably when you're charging your phone up. Uh, here we have frequency range for the uh, AM, FM, and NOAA bands. There you go. We have working voltage, uh, 2.7 to 4.2. Cool. Uh, it has an internal 18650 lithium ion cell, which is rated at 2,000 milliamp hours. Uh, care maintenance. Okay, pretty basic thing. All right, let's get the radio. So it came bubble wrapped, as you saw, which I like. And here it is. The Taimahun FS086. Now let's go over dimensions real quick. So we have a length of 6 inches that includes the front bezel of this light. We have a height of 2 and 5 eighths of an inch. And then we have a radio depth of 2 and one quarter inches. That includes the tuning and volume knobs here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do size comparison. Part a few things out. So first thing we can do is have my ever popular CC pocket to give you an idea. Just so you guys remember, the CC pocket is an emergency radio also. It just doesn't have an awesome flashlight built into it or a huge power bank. <laughs> but it's pretty cool because it does have weather alert also.
But there you go for size comparison. Give you an idea. Okay, and then we have Iron Man. So deck of cards. Give you an idea for size. This is kind of cool. You know, I always thought that that'd be a neat idea to to get a uh, one of those what do they call them Ranger bands. You know, those big rubber bands and kind of rubber band this deck of cards to the radio. That way, when the power's out, you got nothing to do. You got your playing cards. Pretty nice. All right, and get the Iron Man ones. <laughs> and then another cool thing here I got is an Eaton. This is an older uh, model. This is analog scale. This is FRX2. Um, this one runs on a smaller battery. So a lot of people will have this radio and find that it doesn't last as long on a charge. It may want to upgrade with the power capacity that this radio provides. And it's a worthy upgrade. I'll just tell you right off the bat. That just gives you an idea. They're almost about the same size. They do about the same things. You got a headphone port, um, you got USB, and then the light. Now the light's a big difference on this newer model here. So, and uh, so you hear this one's got solar too. So that gives you an idea for size comparison. All right, so let's go over features of this radio. All right, put this down here. Now right away you can tell it has an orange color. And this is a soft touch plastic. Now I know people will get nervous about that. It might get sticky. This feels like a silicone style. It doesn't feel like the typical uh, rubber that you see on the, the older radios like the Eaton's. Um, this has a different texture to it like the Running Snail has. If you guys have any of those radios, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's that newer style. It's super uh, thin coating, I think, because when I took the battery compartment off there, uh, you, could, you could barely tell the coating. So it must be a really thin coating. So if it did get sticky for some reason, it'd probably be easy to remove. So give you a heads up. Um, okay, left-hand side, we have that light. And this light is amazing. Super bright. And we're doing our audio test a little later here in this video. I'll show you in the dark. We'll turn the lights off while the music's going. And you can see that. And I'll show you. We'll do a little bit of demonstration on that. Uh, here we have a speaker, which is about one and a half inches. We have this bar. You'll see four little openings there. There are blue lights that come on. And it gives you your battery status indicator, which I think is pretty cool. It's segmented in four segments. So you have four lights when it's fully charged, when the radio's on, and uh, they'll be blue. And I'll show you that when I turn the radio on. Here we have a charging indicator light. It's picking up the solar from the light next to it. Um, that's charging the battery. And then we have a tuning indicator that turns on green when you're in tune on the radio. Here we have our scale, FM, uh, 87 to 108, and AM, 520 to 1710. And of course, we got our weather band channels 1 through 7 there. Uh, here we have controls. We have the on-off volume knob. Uh, these knobs, now, I did a review on a radio called Intipal, and they had knobs similar to this, but they were like, I don't know, they were very difficult to use. These are very similar knobs, but they're very easy to use, probably because they're not uh, embedded, because I think the other radio, they were lower into the case, and the case was actually stopping the, the uh, knobs from turning, but th this is so easy to turn and tune, and you need this for a DSP radio like this. So the, I like these knobs a lot. So uh, here we go. We got a band select, weather band, FM, AM. Of course, I showed you the tuning knob there. With that little white indicator moving. Yeah, super smooth to tune. The name of the company. All right, bottom of the radio, uh, we have the battery compartment, which is kind of neat. I don't know if you can get these batteries yet. I'm hoping you can. This is an 18650, 2000 milliamp hour rated, but it has a pigtail, so it's wired and plugged in. I don't know if you can see that there. It's kind of hard to get it out of there. I don't want to yank it out. But uh, there is a plug, and it's got wires coming off of it. Uh, so possibly you can get that battery. Hopefully they'll have replacements that are cheaper than the whole radio itself because this radio comes at, at around 20 bucks. So if you're going to replace the battery for 20 bucks, just buy a new radio. Uh, here we have a carry strap, which is really handy. Got to love that. Behind here we have a compartment for the headphone jack, the USB in to charge, uh, the internal battery, and we have an output, a uh, standard USB output. Uh, headphone experience, uh, it's not something I would use on this radio. Definitely uh, an emergency, just uh, use this speaker here. Um, the, the noise floor is fairly high. It wasn't uh, a great experience on the headphones, but uh, that's typical with most uh, inexpensive emergency radios. So I don't, you know, you can leave that option off typically for something like this. Top of the radio, we have the switch for that light. Super bright, not gonna be momentary or you can click it and keep it on. It's pretty handy because you can actually do signaling with it. Very handy. Um, we have a little baby solar panel. Uh, it, it might charge the battery up. Um, it just, uh, I don't know how well it'll do because it's such a small solar panel. Will it provide enough voltage to put a charge to the battery? Hard to say. Uh, this antenna is really small. It's nine and a half inches. It pivots uh, about that degree right there of motion. It's, 
it's okay. I wish it was longer. Uh, it would make the reception of this radio better, which we'll talk about. Here we have the dynamo crank. Flips up. You'll see as you turn it, so the red light comes on. And definitely has some uh, friction there. You can tell you're, you're charging something there. So it's a decent dynamo. I don't go in and run tests on dynamos because, again, I'm not a dynamo fan. But I feel that this will be okay in an emergency situation. Don't rely on this as your main source of charging. Always have it tapped off, you know, topped off here with your charging from your USB port on a computer or on one of your charging blocks. Because, yeah, to do this in an emergency would not be fun. Trust me. I know that for a fact because I've tried it and it's just not a good time. <laughs> But uh, it's, it is a good system, and if you're in a pinch, it'll work for you. But if you're charging this radio all the time with Dynamo, that might end up breaking off with continued use. It's, again, for emergency use only on a Dynamo, I would recommend. All right, so there's the back, pretty basic. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about FM reception, and we'll do some audio on this. FM reception report. Uh, I got okay on FM sensitivity, so a little less than average. Um, but I got about 34 stations. I'll attribute it to this antenna uh, being really small. When I was... Uh, Tuning this radio, I found when I hooked up my wire, like I have a little Texan wire here, reception improved about 120%. <laughs> it was a gigantic improvement. Um, but, you know, without that, you have that little antenna, because not people are going to have wires, running, you know, hanging around on it when they're running around with their radio in an emergency. Um, it's just, it's adequate. So that's what I'll say. FM selectivity was adequate, meaning it was okay. So it's like a two-star rating. It's not horrible because uh, it gets all the local stations and strong stations on FM and fairly clear and locks them in. But uh, yeah, any kind of faint stations, forget it. You're not going to get them with this little little antenna. Um, as far as weather band, I'll show you. I get my one channel. Um, that's about all I get with this radio with this little antenna. And uh, let's see. We'll go ahead and tune that, and then we'll go ahead and do radio Totterbird. So let's go ahead and go to weather weather band there. Turn it on. There's our. Oh, let me get to the uh, station. The record high is 67 degrees. See, which I, was I get my station. Without the antenna up, but I'll get a little clearer signal if I put it up here. Let me just extend that. So here's the lights. So you get four uh, blue LEDs, and these will actually go down as the battery decreases. Um, so right now it's fully charged. Here we got a bright green light, which is our tuning indicator. And I'll go ahead and turn this up. High temperature for tomorrow is 35 degrees, and the normal low is 21. The record high for tomorrow is 66, which occurred in 1975, and the record low is minus 9, which occurred in 1901. Sunset tonight is at 4.21 p.m. Nuts becoming more east 5 to 10 nuts late. That's channel 7. Areas of fog. 21, serving the north end. Yeah, that was a surprise. You didn't get that earlier. Sometimes I get channel one. Okay. That gives you an idea for the weather band. Here is the hazardous weather outlook. Most people will get the one, which is good. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to put this antenna down, and we're going to do the audio test. Now, when I do the audio test, I use a C-Crane uh, FM transmitter, too. I get this question asked all the time, um, how I'm getting music on the radio. This is a really novel idea. Here is the transmitter. I'm trying to bring it over here. C-Crane FM transmitter, too. Yeah, this thing is great. Um, I use it for demonstration purposes for this radio. What I have is I have, there's a uh, Sony MP3 player hooked up to this uh, transmitter, transmitting uh, royalty-free music over 92.9 megahertz, and you actually can change it uh, to wherever there's a clear channel. It's got a little baby antenna here. It probably puts out, I don't know, 150 milliwatts, so it's very, very simple. Probably covers the home, and that's about it. Maybe out to the sidewalk at the furthest, but it's not supposed to interfere with anybody else's um, signals. So here you got little light showing your level. If this turns red, you're, you're over level, which means you'll have distorted audio on your receive end. So it's kind of nice. Power on off. So it's kind of a neat little thing. There's your input level you can change. This is what I use uh, to broadcast to the radio so you guys can hear the music. I can play music here without any copyright violations. And I'll be honest with you, there's actually some music that you can't play and then have your video air. I actually had a video blocked once because Ozzy was playing. <laughs> I think it was Crazy Train or something like that was playing. And yeah, it didn't let me uh, post that video. So <laughs> that's why we do it. So let's go ahead and go to FM Band. We talking away here. Uh, let's see if I think we'll get to Radio Todd over here. Yep, I was on it. There we go. Run this for a few minutes. We'll do some AM band scanning.
gives you an idea. It's not fantastic, but it's an emergency radio. So it's not something you're going to be listening to 24-7. Um, this is something you're just going to pack away when you get an emergency. So <laughs> uh, it's okay. It's, it's good. So let's go ahead, explore the AM band. And uh, here we can hear there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off my transformers and the transmitter and my MP3 player. Okay. Let's go ahead. We're in AM band. Go to the bottom of the band here. Now I'll just do a quick uh, band scan. It is uh, 5, 10 p.m. Central Standard Time near Chicago, Illinois. We'll use the CC Pocket today for a frequency checker if we need it. Um, it. Yeah, the sun's down for about 40 minutes, so we do pick up some long distance stations right now, which is nice. And then we get the daytime stations mixed in. So let's see how this performs. I'm going to bring this down close and personal. With the time I hung. All right. I'm digging this uh, indicator. It's really nice. Nice visual to let you know, especially when you're using this as a power bank to charge uh, external devices. The Senate's been clear for a couple weeks now. Uh, they're outraged. You out there who love Lindsey Graham, and I know a lot of you out there now. So on the AM circuit, it has uh, some, as you heard, noise. Um, some buzzing in that. I noticed it less when this battery is not as charged, so I think it has something to do with these LEDs being lit up, uh, causing that interference sound. Just letting you know. That's just my observations. These votes today... Uh... But this radio will be excellent on... No on that. I just, I like... On, uh, Stations that are uh, close, like this is a local 670. Accomplished this year. Yeah, that means I'm willing to bet more on a team quarterback. And that music there, I'm going to check it, but I think that's going to be 650 Nashville, which would be pretty neat on a little sensitive. Okay, so that's 6.30. Um, 6.30 is uh, CFCO Channel, Ontario, about 310 miles. So it gives you an idea. 6,000 watt tower, so not bad. Good luck winning a division if he's not elite of elite. And I don't think you're going to see 2011, 2012-ish type Aaron Rodgers again. The guy's going to be 36 next year. I get it. Tom Brady is defying logic in what he's done the last... Actually, you that buzzing sound, but not on a strong station. This is about 700, I think. He is a lawyer. He represents a client. I never directed him to do anything incorrect or wrong, and he understands that. That's an interesting argument that a client would make about a lawyer, which is, hey, he should have been the one who told me. So 720 WGN, I had coming no in perfectly. Because I'll bet you, in, in, in all honesty... I-75 southbound before U.S. 24 Dixie Highway has cleared from the right lane. Traffic still heavy. I'm Peggy Hodge, WJR Traffic and Weather, first on the box. Cool. WJR. WJR Weather. Low side down to 30 degrees with a sprinkle of flurry around. So, Mostly I mean, it is picking up some uh, semi-locals. Uh, you know, nothing super far yet. But this is WJR. This is um, Detroit. And I think, believe it's 270 miles away. So, Detroit, Michigan. Across the lake for me. Uh, overall should be ready to go despite that sore hip. Everybody else ready to go. Packers have injury concerns including 780 right WBBM, Chicago. On defense, Kenny Clark out with an elbow injury and Brian Belonga, the Chicago area product, also Chemotherapy prices are and, and what these transformations might mean to them. 820 right? WCPT. So we're going to do. We are going to take the show on the road and engage the outer show. Okay, the outer shell is different. Yeah, yeah, okay, Let's but here's see, my question. Eight, when you cremate the body, is it just the body in the oven? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, right, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is WHAS, Louisville, Kentucky, like about 300 miles. I don't have a, I don't hey, have a question. I just love, to see it. I love, that it, I love that it started with a crosswalk. Picking up some faint stations. I believe the ferrite's on the bottom here running this direction, so it's in the right direction when you're trying to find stations. Kicker Sean 
Sweesom is back with the Steelers. Now, not to take Chris Boswell's job, rather to assist him as a coach. The Sweesom was... Uh, they've made it to T1. South side. Chiefs can lock up a third straight That's AFC WBT West title 10, tonight. They host the Chargers, L.A. Only a game behind. You can hear that game on the fan coverage straight at 8. Reports oh, wow. Eagles quarterback Carson Wentz has a broken vertebrae in his back. He was obviously unable to practice today. Maryland Eastern Shore plays Pitt Saturday. Tonight, they're at Duquesne at the top of the hour. Michael Hughes, 59 points in his last three games. He's shooting 80% from the floor. Big game in the NHL tonight with the Maple Leafs at Tampa Bay, two of the best teams, at least so far, in the Eastern Conference. The Pens host Boston tomorrow, and they're home to the Kings on Saturday. Indians bring back Carlos Santana. Hmm. They traded Edwin Encarnacion to Seattle. Lance Lynn, three years, 30 million to the Rangers. Jay Happ, two years, 34 million 10, to the Yankees. KDK Jeff KDK Pittsburgh. Radio 1020, KDK Sports. Says it. <laughs> after I spent the time, I'm Amy 450 Eric miles. Madison Not bad. A hair color Not company bad I named after my daughter. It's very me. Uh, he's obviously got the NFL record streak going right now. First WMVP. Three MVP. attempts with understand that there is a huge leader in right? interceptions at 25 and so strength against strength but what I ever imagined well done Mr. President somebody finally standing up for us and securing our border we are across this 1040 from one Iowa 200 miles I want to hear from Spring Garden here Bridge on the right shoulder, 271 south after Richmond and on Fairmont Boulevard at Warrensville Center. Some construction beginning right now in the right lane closed on 271 south after Rockside. So expect some delays that work scheduled until 6 a.m. tomorrow. This report is sponsored by Monroe. Cleveland, uh, Ohio, 345 miles. News Radio WTAM 1100 total traffic. There's a season for everything. And at Monroe Auto Service and Tire. Get involved in questioning the Flynn draft. 1120 PMLX. Eleven forty. Uh, the RVA, Richmond, the Virginia. Six hundred and sixty-five miles. Now go back to February. Graham and Grassley requested eleven sixty around the web at eleven sixty market. And now, Pastor Daryl Merrill of Christian Life Church. Local eleven sixty W Y L L. Chicago. We've already talked about how there's hardships and difficulties. Cruise the rest of the band here. Being bullied. You know what his last name is? We'll get to that next on the Marketing Van Camp Show. Not sure what this is here. Oh, I hate music because I always wonder if it's copyrighted. It's funny. Come on, stop playing music. Big inventory and big savings. It's the big finish event at Uptrain Chrysler. Wait for Dodge Jeep Ram. Week or next or whatever, not because he. Ben Jacobson has done over 13 years. I mean, they're one of the prominent programs, not only in pounding stuff issue. like that. Yeah. What is it with people that why that, that don't want to just get the right? And by the way, oh, he looks out. He looks. Okay, so the tops are right about there. Quick, turn this off. We'll do final thoughts on the Tai Mahon FS086. So, what do you get for around 20 bucks? You get a really cool uh, power bank, the 2000 milliamp hour 18650 cell with a really bright flashlight. This thing is so bright, man. It's, <laughs> you saw it when I tried to demo this. I, I need to take this outside because this thing can spot across the room, probably across the street. Um, so, this thing is definitely more of a spot versus a flood. Uh, set up. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd rather had more of a flood, but uh, spot, you know, an emergency. If you're looking and searching uh, in the yard for something, you're going to find it with this flashlight for sure. Um, so definitely a great power bank slash flashlight um, that, you know, dynamo and solar powered. Uh, I do like that. The, the weak side of it is the radio part. I mean, it's not fantastic. It will get what it needs done. I mean, the FM, you will get strong stations. AM, you will get strong stations. Uh, you have to put up with noise on the AM band. Um, FM, like I said, sounds good. Uh, the weather band, you know, you're going to pick up hopefully your, your one local like I do, and there's no issue there. So, you know, pretty much this comes down to, I'll be honest with you, I have this radio here, this Eaton, which I'm going to review. I haven't reviewed it yet, but I had reviewed something similar to this. Uh, this this is actually a pretty weak radio. I was surprised how this is, wasn't that great, um, and I wouldn't want this as my emergency radio. So if you guys want something like this, 
um, move up to a, a more powerful radio would be a wise choice um, for emergency use. Uh, this would definitely be the one to have. This here, you know, if you have one, replace it because it's just it's not the greatest. It uses a little tiny battery, the capacity is weak, and you can't even add external batteries either. One thing this is missing too is its ability to run external batteries. Now, you could probably, if you're techie, you could definitely wire up an external battery pack. And I thought about it too. It wouldn't be a bad thing, but uh, I would probably do it with a different radio like this radio here. But it already has the external batteries here. So what it comes down to is that you want something that does a lot of features and a little bit bigger, or you need something small and compact that you can put in a drawer or pack away in a small bag. So yeah, it just comes down to what your family needs um, versus you know size. So they're both great radios. Um, again, this pretty much comes down to what you need in a small package. It does it pretty well. Uh, it would get recommended recommended by yeah at, at, at around a twenty dollar price point. It's good. Anything higher, um, there's a lot of other options for you. But uh, this price point and lower, it's not a bad investment. Again, flashlight is great. Uh, that alone, like I'm like yeah, that's not bad. I'm a I'm a light freak too. I do like flashlights, so that's awesome. All right, so there you go. It does get a recommended buy for me. Um, I do like this. I like this better than the eSky uh, model. I like it better than the uh, Intipel uh, version of the Running Snail. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't have the flip-up thing with the lights, but to be honest with you, I'm not going to use this to read by. I'm going to use this in emergency to find my better flashlight and my better radio is probably what I would do, you know, like my bigger radios. That's me, though. But if this is your only radio you have, it's not a bad option. Just make sure you keep this battery fully charged. All right, so if you enjoyed the presentation of this video, please give a big like. You guys are awesome. As usual, if you like this brand, you like emergency radios, subscribe, hit the bell icon, get notified of my future videos. I love emergency radios. I like reviewing them. I'm probably going to do another top five um, under a certain dollar amount uh, video coming up in 2019. So look forward to that. Um, I'll showcase some of these newer radios and compare them side by side to other ones and why I picked them as my recommendations. It'll be a fun video to make. Uh, three, of course, comment what you think about the FS086 Tai Mahon radio. Uh, it'll be something you pick up or something you would pass on. Um, to be honest with you, it is not a bad investment for what it does. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you watching. Take care, and we'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.